May I request Dr. Rajesh Patale, the next speaker, to be on the stage, please? And may I request Dr. Ramaman Chanda to chair the session? Good afternoon, and gives me a lot of pleasure to present our colleague from Pune, uh, Dr. Rajesh, who has received his training in hematostasis, hemostasis, molecular biology, and quality management. He is a lead, he's an assessor also, being a good hematopathologist and has been trained by a lot of workshops in coagulation and a lot of interest in bone marrow, bleeding disorders and electrophoresis, wide spe spectrum of working culture. But Rajesh, we look forward to listening to you on mean platelet volume. Lot of discussion has already happened, advantages and limitations. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you very much, ma'am, for that kind introduction. At the outset, let me thank uh, my entire team for inviting me and making me this uh, part of uh, this uh, academic feast going over for the last uh, one and a half day. So, <clears throat> I'm, I'll be speaking on uh, mean platelet volume. So, specifically, I chose this uh, topic uh, since uh, most of the people or most of the labs are still using three-part analyzers and the available parameter for platelets apart from the platelet count is uh, the mean platelet volume and even for those who are using five-part or seven-part analyzers and because of my own favorism towards the histograms, I thought MPV is a better choice for a discussion of course a lot has been discussed in the previous talk from Dr. Vinanti about the IPF, the platelet H or the platelet I also. So before I actually go towards the mean platelet volume, let me have some uh, disclaimers that the automated platelet count, the, uh, this is the first slide. So ISLH uh, has given the peripheral smear review criteria for a platelet count below 100,000. Uh, and if there is a significant delta check which is failed and if there are flags which include platelet clumps. So these flags are most of the times uh, available on even the three-part analyzers and this or five-part analyzers. Apart from that, the clinical decision-making values, of course, less than 20,000 platelet count is a must to have a smear review, but 50,000 to 100,000 also is uh, uh, <coughs> an area which needs a significant consideration for smear review and the reasons we have seen in the previous uh, presentations also. And the IS, IS, ICSH critical alert interval has been defined as less than 50,000 uh, as the parameter. Now, before I go to the MPV, again, a simple thing or repetition, the platelet, uh, the techniques for the counting of platelets by the automatic analyzers is the, sim the first and foremost is the impedance method wherein uh, the pulse is generated. The second is the optical oblique, the fluorescence method. Uh, the, there is difference between the dyes which are being used in optical method, the polymethane dye is used and in the fluorescent method, oxazine dye is used and the uh, discriminator is uh, set in such a manner that the um, platelets are uh, counted uh, in the fluorescent channel. Uh, and the third method is the immunological platelet method, which is the most accurate and the recommended or the uh, reference method for the establishment of the platelet count. Now, with we'll straight away go to uh, do the limitations of the impedance and the optical method. For impedance method, it can give false low counts because of the in samples which do have large platelets, which are not counted by the machine. And if there are significant interferences, the interferences will be like giant platelets in IDP patients, platelet clumps as we have already seen in the previous talks and in some of the patients of uh, having RBC fragments or microcytes. In optical methods, it is assumed that the uh, falsely high counts have been established since the discriminator on the fluorescent channel is set on the lower mode, so the small platelets are counted uh, and you can get falsely high count. And of course, the drawback of immunological method is the high cost. So with that, I'll come to the platelet, uh, the schematic uh, diagram, how the platelets are counted. So in most of the times, the 
platelets are counted between 2 to 20 femtoliters channel. Most of the analyzers are uh, um, having the discriminator for the platelets as between 2 to 20 femtoliters. Any particle which comes in that area has been counted as platelet and a histogram is generated which has to be uh, a double histogram with a um, uh, this is, it should start from 2 it should end at 20 uh, and <coughs> it is slightly having a shift to left that is particularly for, for the platelets and with that uh, if a vertical uh, is drawn from the peak of this uh, histogram then it is accounting for the mean platelet volume. So, this is the basic principle for the impedance and this uh, MPV which is generated is most of the times useful uh, in different different conditions and in thromocytic patients uh, if you get a low MPV then you are most of the times dealing with a hypoproliferative ma uh, marrow like an aplastic anemia. If the MPV is high then you are dealing with an hyperproliferative marrow conditions or ITP patients, DIC or some infiltrative disorders can be thought of based on the MPV values, but this has to be correlated with the other cell count parameters as well. So, MPV in a patient or in a case of thrombocytosis, if it is low, then most of the times it is assumed to be a reactive thrombocytosis, but you can get cases wherein the patient has persistent thrombocytosis with a normal or low MPV, which can turn out to be a case of uh, chronic myeloproliferative neoplasm. But invariably, if the MPV is high in a case of thrombocytosis, then you may be dealing with a chronic myeloproliferative neoplasm. Now, we did a, uh, we did a study during the last uh, September for the platelet count. So, a total of 7,340 cases were there, wherein uh, um, thrombocytopenic patients were uh, counted. Almost 10 percent belong uh, were within the 100 to 150,000 category, so 8 percent in 50 to 1,000 and below 20,000 were almost 300 cases. So, we evaluated this less than 20,000 uh, platelet count uh, samples and of course, all these smears were reviewed, but I will just go through the smear review of this uh, category of less than 20,000. So, out of those, almost 190 cases were non-infectious since we have an active unit of uh, hematology uh, going on plus the oncology. The majority of patients belong to the, uh, the non-infectious category uh, and the infectious patients were 96. Now, out of these, when we reviewed the smear, only 7 of the infectious category showed discrepancy between the machine count and the manual count. And only 21 cases of non-infectious category showed discrepancy. Rest of the non-discrepant samples were quite high, wherein the machine count and the manual count were very well matching. And when we step, when we check the uh, samples from a infectious category patient for subsequent uh, samples and the platelet counts, when we when we saw the platelet counts were increasing at the same time the MPV also was increasing in the follow-up samples. But as <coughs> we were discussing right now about the IPF, the last count uh, which showed the count was increasing but the MPV dropped. So, that may be a, an area wherein the IPF goes down once the platelet recovery starts. So, till this recovering phases, even this uh, the the count recovery was not significantly high. From 30,000, it has gone to 50,000 only. And, but the MPV was significantly high and the last count showed a slight drop in the or maintenance of the mean platelet volume. Okay. So, <clears throat> with this, one disclaimer will always be there that platelet count and MPV should be read hand in hand. Only platelet count or only mean platelet volume, it should not be interpreted on its own. Because, and it is always uh, mentioned that these go together as an inverse nonlinear correlation. Okay, as the count goes up, the MPV may go down unless and until there is a specific pathology related to the condition. Now, this is the histogram if you get, now this is the 
<coughs> the right side histogram is the ideal histogram. Now, in this patient, uh, the, the sample, the machine will not be able to analyze the mean platelet volume where it should be doing. And even if the machine is giving you the mean platelet volume, it will be a non-representative MPV value. Okay, and that will be because of these kind of large platelets that you see. So, you have to have a good look at the platelet histogram uh, and then only go ahead with the uh, interpretation of the smear review as well and this uh, machine counts as well. So, the advantages of MPV are since it is a derived parameter, it is derived from the histogram, no additional cost comes. So, it is relatively cheaper and it is available even in three part analyzer. So, any lab can just evaluate the mean platelet volumes based on the uh, information available in the histogram and it correlates very well with the platelet activity that is in cases of infections, patients on chemotherapy or stem cell transplant patients or inflammatory or prothrombotic conditions. Now, you can see raised MPV in following conditions and it does have a significant impact. So, in cases of cardiovascular conditions, it carries the high MPV carries a risk of acute cardiac events and increased risk of death in cases of acute myocardial infarction. Cerebral stroke, same scenario and it can be used uh, for monitoring of the recombinant human uh, erythropoietin levels in patients of chronic renal failure. But it carries a high MPV carries a risk of clotting. So, what are the limitations? Now, in majority of the uh, myelodysplastic conditions or in a few of the inherited platelet function disorders like the Bernard Solier syndrome or gray platelet syndrome, you do have large platelets. So, thereby you will get a high MPV. But most of the times these are non functional platelets. In the recovering marrows or in patients of uh, viral fevers or infectious uh, etiology, the recovering platelets are functional platelets. These are not the functional platelets. These are the hypogranular platelets, but you will get a raised MPV, which is of no use actually. So, you cannot rely on that raised MPV value in conditions like that. That's why now, now this large platelets of uh, ITP versus a large platelet or a giant hypogranular platelet in a myelodysplastic syndrome. The machine based on MPV or based on histogram will not be able to differentiate what is the morphology of this hypogranular platelet. So, again this has to be correlated with other CBC parameters, but you have to keep a caution in your mind that it is not going to help you in these conditions. <clears throat> now, can an optical or fluorescence method of uh, platelet count is helpful in these conditions to analyze a giant hypogranular platelets? So, now most of the times the uh, large platelets are lying in the black round where we see the giant platelets. So, hypogranular platelets can those have uh, low fluorescence and can those lie in the red area which we will have to evaluate and MPV there are significant pre-analytical uh, influences uh, of course venipun venipuncture with or without stasis if there is a stasis then the, there can be a chance of getting a platelet aggregates and which can impact the MPV as well underfill overfill that is the EDTA uh, proportion which is available for the um, uh, sample Inadequate mixing again can have platelet clumps and it is mentioned that at room temperature or cooler than uh, cooler temperature, you can get artificially raised MPV uh, in a sample if it is not stored properly. Analytical influences as yes ma'am, this we were discussing about the harmonization of the equip equipments. Now, uh, majority of the uh, analyzer manufacturers do have the 2 to 20 femtoliters of the uh, discriminator for the platelet count. But there are some analyzers with 30 femtoliter cutoffs. So, there will definitely be some variation when you get values between these two analyzers. So, the range of detection or the range of uh, discriminator has to be uniform or there has to be harmonization between the manufacturers. Plus, 
between the methods also there can be different uh, um, uh, variations there can be different variations uh, and of course the impact of rbc fragments and giant platelets how it is going to address yes and in patients with the constitutional macrothrombocytopenia patient as was discussed in the morning some analyzers do give 30 or 40000 but actual machine count, actual manual count is somewhere around 80 or 90000 and some of the analyzers do give the value of more than 70 80000 so these analytical influences we have to come up and do some harmonization studies or the uh, activities so that the machine the intra instrument variation goes down and this lack of standardization is there available because there is no calibration point available for the mean platelet volume there is no standard available or the calibrator available for that and there are no validated cutoffs for the mean platelet volumes uh, and it is dependent upon the method also so there is no uniformity between the cutoffs so this also an issue is needs, uh, needs to be addressed Similarly, there are no internal IQC samples or equus material available. And it has been shown that equipment to equipment variability is around 25%. So, can we have some role of artificial intelligence which addresses the morphological details of the giant platelets or the giant hypogranular platelets? And it can be possible. It is possible because AI does use the uh, the image library which is available in the uh, machine. Plus, if we have to use uh, middleware, then are we going to deal only with the uh, platelet count, or can we use mean platelet volume as a uh, parameter uh, for the um, algorithm to be developed? And for delta checks to be applied for MPV, there are no pers uh, accepted percent uh, ac accepted values between the uh, delta check values. Whether to be accepted on the value based uh, um, MPV or a percent difference. And th that can be used for automated selection of veri uh, verification. So with that, I end my talk and I am open for the discussion. Thank you very much.